Coming up on News Channel 5's Jambalaya, deadly storms lash out at Sinlaw, killing at least one person. Those new details plus a live report on the damage. And flattening the curve, we're days away from the governor's stay-at-home order ending while the state is in a much better place. And we'll also look at a radar recap from our severe outbreak. Jambalaya starts right now. From your local station, this is News Channel 5's Jambalaya. It's 5 o'clock. Good morning. I'm Javante Thomas. First up, severe weather ripped through parts of Sinlaw overnight claiming the life of a woman in Woodworth. That's according to the Rapids Parish Sheriff's Office. It happened on Robinson Bridge Road. The identity of the woman has not been released at this time, but we expect to have an update later this morning. And parts of LSUA got hit hard by last night's storms. The front line of the LSU Ag Center's DeWitt livestock facility was ripped off. Also, power lines were down and debris scattered. LSUA officials tell us luckily the possible tornado missed the residential facilities and no one was injured. But for the extent of the damage, they say they have to wait and see until the sun comes up. Well, the most important thing, Stephen, is that we do have five uh, faculty and staff that live on the station. Uh, along with their families, and we do know that they are safe and sound, uh, so we've accounted for all of our personnel. We did take a direct hit, the LSU Ag Center did take a direct hit to our DeWitt Livestock facility right behind us, and then basically everything east of Highway 71, we do have significant infrastructure damage. Well, we've been monitoring this uh, the last three or four hours and watching it coming this way, and uh, we got students still living here, yeah. and they're only about 400 yards away from this building, so you can imagine how relieved we are that it didn't hit our residential hall. Uh, we did evacuate them from the top floor to the bottom floor, got in the bathrooms, and we had that done just in time before this tornado hit. But uh, we're very, very fortunate, and we thank God the, these students are safe. But it looks like the damage will be pretty much on the Ag Center side, but we're still assessing the campus right now. And we're still tracking the aftermath of those deadly storms. News Channel 5's Rachel Pinchin is on scene near LSUA this morning with a closer look at some of that damage. And Rachel, what are you seeing right now? All right, Rachel, thanks for that update. And I had just looked at the Clico outage map. About 4,300 people are without power at this time. Now we're going to send it over to Adelie Rowe in the First Alert Storm Center, who is breaking down exactly what happened in the last few hours that caused these deadly storms. Good morning. Here's a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers in the state. There are now 25,258 reported cases of COVID-19 in Louisiana since the Louisiana Department of Health began tracking. Now that's an increase of 404 from Tuesday and 1,473 people have died from it, an increase of 68 from Tuesday. There are 1,747 patients hospitalized, which has dropped by 51 from Tuesday and now 287 patients are on ventilators and that's dropped by 10 since Tuesday. Now here in Sinlaw, the numbers only increasing slightly at this point. Here are the numbers for Rapids of Oils, Vernon, Grant, and Nagatish parishes. Rapids seeing only four more cases. Now here are the numbers from some of our outlining parishes, St. Landry, Allen, Evangel, and Beauregard, an increase of three deaths in the St. Landry Parish. And some remaining local parishes, Catahoula, Concordia, LaSalle, Sabine, and Wynn. The numbers basically the same from yesterday, and you can find all of these numbers and more on our website. Now, during his task force briefing Wednesday, Governor John Bell Edwards says he'll have more information on his plan for the state past May 1st later this week, and he's asking citizens to now wear masks whenever they are in public. And the town of LeCount has issued a curfew to help fight COVID-19. The curfew will be between the hours of 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. for children under 17 and will be between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. for adults. Officials say people cannot be on streets, sidewalks, highways, roads, parks, playgrounds, public buildings, and more. Now, those who are traveling to and from essential work jobs and minors who are accompanied by a parent or guardian are given exceptions. Now, the curfew will remain until May 1st unless terminated sooner or extended for a longer period of time. And in this together was a motto of one local society's community outreach event Wednesday that was held in two different locations in Alexandria. News Channel 5's Joanna Phillips has more on that. 
And stay on top of what's happening when you follow us on our social media pages and make sure you download that KALB app to get push notifications for breaking news and weather. And of course, anytime we have a severe weather event that just stresses the need to have that weather app, Adelie. For sure, because you need to. Have All right, thanks, Adeline. Of course, this may be our first dry weekend in, what, the past maybe three weeks. Well, after the weather we've been dealing with lately, we definitely deserve it. All right, thanks so much. Coming up right after the break, new details this morning, how the real estate market may be bouncing back. And love under quarantine, how people are dating while social distancing.